because the dogs do not enjoy racing. There's no doubt about the fact that they love it. They're very keen to do it. It's the chase mechanism, it's what they do. So many that just disappear and you never really know what has happened to them. Um, one can only imagine what fate has decided for them. Greyhound racing gathers thousands of people every year. It remains one of the most popular sports in this country ever since the first racing event took place in Britain in 1926. Over the last few years, citizens and organizations have shown mixed feelings towards the racing industry. Accusations of mistreatment against the Greyhounds have captured the attention of the media. And this is the scenario that seems to emerge. The anti-Greyhound racing groups want to protect the dogs, while industry officials want to protect the business. In 1928, the National Greyhound Racing Club was founded, endowing the sport with an institution to represent it. Bolton, Derby, Norwich, London Walthamstow and London White City are some of the 96 tracks that used to operate under the NGRC. Golden years for greyhound racing, but nothing lasts forever. The negative media coverage and the decline in attendance over the last six years appear as signs that the industry will not last much longer. A sizable number of tracks have been shut down and the Greyhound Board of Great Britain has taken over the role of the NGRC. Nowadays, 26 stadiums remain open in the UK, working under the Greyhound Board of Great Britain. The most famous one is in London, Wimbledon. I started in 1971 as a kennel boy. So, uh, and it just spread from there really, I just kept in it and wanted to emulate anybody that I saw really, which was ground trainers and I always wanted to be one. But you, you have to know the dogs and basically if you feed them very well and make sure they're tidy and they look nice and no injuries and they're happy, then they usually run fairly well for you. There's, there's other things you do that you have to to get their fitness right and what every dog likes, whether it needs a lot of work or no work, or, but you get to know it as you go along. They're already taught how to run uh, and basically a greyhound loves chasing, it loves actually chasing a moving object, that's what it loves doing, it, it, it gets a big thrill out of it and all we have to do is teach it to run a track, uh, which is sometimes a little bit awkward because uh, they've not done that before basically, so we have to teach them to run a semi-circle and, and, and that's, what, that's what makes them good or bad really, whether they can run around the track. To look after their muscles like any athlete, I think, you know, I mean, you do unfortunately every now and then do get a broken leg or not often, thankfully, it's very rare, uh, but it does happen and uh, we always repair them, always put them right again and then we either home them or they come back racing again, depending on how severe it is. But basically it's keeping the muscles right and if you keep those right, then hopefully the more serious injuries won't happen. I've got about 16 retired dogs in my kennel and I think we must have homed, I think this year we've homed about I'd say 15, 20 dogs this year we've homed. Many people enjoy greyhound racing, but others would prefer to see it end. PETA is but one of the many organisations that oppose the racing industry. To give you some idea of the kind of things that we get involved with, uh, I think it was either last year or the year before, we campaigned to help um, Bolton close down their last greyhound stadium in the area, that's in the north of England. Um, it was called West Houghton Greyhound Stadium. We got we mobilised thousands of our supporters to write to the to Bolton Council and actually ask them to support a planning application to um, close down the Greyhound Stadium and build houses instead. And you know, thanks to thousands of our supporters doing that, the council decided to go ahead with it. They closed the stadium. It's now being pulled down and yeah, never to reopen again. Um, we're doing something similar more recently with Wimbledon Greyhound Stadium. Uh, that's something that's quite a contentious issue at the minute. It's the country's most famous Greyhound Stadium. But because no one really is interested in going watching Greyhound racing anymore, they're losing money and the owners have now submitted a proposal to close down the stadium and build homes. Uh, so again, we got our supporters involved and almost 15,000 people wrote to Merton Council asking them to close down the stadium and have a football stadium instead. We're still waiting to hear the outcome of that one, but if it's anything like Bolton, then I'm sure it will. it's only a good thing that can happen. Everyone loves dogs, so no one wants to see animals abused for entertainment, which is why 
when people learn the truth about greyhound racing, they are quite rightly outraged by it. We, we you know, raise awareness through the greyhounds. We show people that they don't come to us straight off the track, happy and healthy and fit. They come to us further down the line. And um, although essentially we're a campaigning group, um, over the years we have managed to find people that are able to foster the greyhounds and adopt them. So quite often we're able to take greyhounds in but we don't work with the industry and we do name and shame and we do trace the greyhounds back to who last owned them and who raced them and we do put their pictures up before and after so you know people can't turn around and say to us this is a load of rubbish you're making it up because the dogs are there and the photos are there and it's not lies because that's real that's fact you can't possibly find homes for thousands of greyhounds every year that leave in the industry year in year out and um, for every greyhound puppy that is born one of them will make the grey to race the other one won't so it's a 50 50 that, that's how bad it is greyhounds are just bred for a purpose it's a commercial industry where people place bets and um, you know money is made from the greyhounds if if, if it was done as a hobby and it was illegal to place or accept bets on greyhounds, then they wouldn't be bred to the extent that they're bred. I do work with some groups in Spain and the situation there is much more um, pronounced, I want to say. Uh, they're called Galgos in Spain and um, it's been estimated that about 50,000 greyhounds every year are you know used and abused by this industry and who knows what happens to them afterwards there was a report that was done by PACMA the political party for animals and they found that in just the course of nine months there was 50 greyhounds that they documented who had been hanged who had been shot run over or just abandoned because the industry had no use for them anymore so the situation in Spain is also really bad and you know we're always looking for opportunities to if we can get involved in official level things like planning applications if a greyhound stadium is having difficulty and they're considering closing down we're quite happy to try and push them over the edge and get them to close down um i have personally spoke to other campaigning organisations like the League Against Cruel Sports, they do a lot on greyhound racing and more local areas such as Great Exploitations they're called, um, they work on greyhound racing and they do a lot of the undercover um, work in this country where they actually film what goes on at the races. We're remembering all the hundreds and thousands of greyhounds that get injured on the dangerously configured tracks greyhounds that are no good for racing, puppies that don't even make it to a track and all these dogs are unaccounted for. The industry can't explain where they all are, the numbers don't add up, um, the, the injuries that greyhounds sustain while they're competing on tracks, even before they get to race on a licensed track when they're trialled, they get injured and mostly their life is ended. Once they've kind of reach their limit once they're no longer useful or profitable to people who race these animals. There's absolutely no reason for them to keep them. A lot of them are abandoned. Um, you will see, you know, if you go to any animal shelter, you'll see the usual, you know, pit bulls, rottweilers, dangerous dogs, but you'll also see so many greyhounds that have been just discarded, like you use betting slips after their racing days are over. I love animals and I've got a dog as well and I do a lot of work with a dog rescue charity. And so the more, I guess, I got involved with working with animal rights charities, the more I learned about the horrible uh, reality. I do a lot of charity work, so I work with the Canine Angels, which is a dog rescue charity. So I go out to Romania and try and rehome as many dogs as possible. Um, so no, it was an amazing campaign. It's nice to be able to do something that I feel really passionately about. I don't really agree with greyhound racing because I don't really agree with any sport where animals are involved for human enjoyment, just because I think dogs are so similar to humans and I wouldn't like to be forced to be racing down a track with, like, against my will. Um, so yeah, I would say that I'm against greyhound racing. The real attraction of greyhound racing has always been gambling, and this is where the bookmakers make money. 
lucky gamblers can receive prizes worth up to a whopping £250,000. It is small wonder that betting is still the key ingredient to this sport. I like to have a drink, I like to watch uh, the dogs run, I like to have a bet and it's a good night out. You can't, you can't bet a lot, so most I've ever won Greyhound racing is about £400. First bet, uh, just, just a like, 50p bet, like £3 like trio thing, but yeah, that's it. I'm not a big better. <laughs> I don't really, I don't really like the actual race. I don't really like dogs running around. Like, I, don't, I find it quite a bit cruel, cool, really. But it's only because everyone wanted to come. But uh, yeah, like, I like betting. It's sort of a bit of a thrill of like, we win or not. I, don't really like. I think it's a bit more, a bit more social. Like, I don't know. And you don't have to love the sport to like enjoy it at the same time. It's enjoyable. Just really the the competitiveness of the sport really gets me. It's like, it's like your dog against somebody else's dog type thing, yeah? Officially, I'm not supposed to gamble yeah. <laughs> as a trainer, but yeah, of course, you know, we, I, 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 I like to have a bet on the, um, you know, if, if you've got one anti post in a competition and it's a big price, I normally have a little, little, little bet on that. But um, yeah, in general, I like to bet sort of thing. It's, it's, it has to be done in moderation, it's like everything, you know. I think he's got a fabric that's, that's engendered into sort of working class people. It's, it's somewhere to come, it's, it's a giggle as we would say. Um, and obviously everyone wants to win a little bit of money to get them through the rest of the month, I suppose. When they come out of the traps and the Im immediate excitement of, is my dog going to win? The fanfare, obviously. But obviously there's also something quite exciting about collecting a winning ticket. If you, uh, if you have to present your ticket and Obviously someone's giving you a little bit of money that you haven't really had to work for. Yeah. Greyhound racing, it's a few pounds, you come in, you get a race card. It's, it's not an expensive night. Obviously having a bet makes it that more, a little bit more expensive, but it is, it's, as I said, it's in the fabric and it's, it's accessible. Do dogs enjoy racing? There is much controversy over this question. On the one hand, it is argued that it is in dogs' nature to run and chase. On the other hand, one cannot deny that racing dogs often incur injuries that can be life-changing. Chrti jako geneticky vyšlechtěná, vyšlechtěná rasa je vlastně přímo určená vlastně k těm těm chrtím závodům. Fakt je, chrti dosahují při maximální rychlosti až 70 km za hodinu a při takové rychlosti, když běží ve smečce, dochází velice často buď to třeba vlivem špatného nerovného terénu, nebo případně v kontaktu se sousedním psem dochází často k pádům, které při takové rychlosti mývají fatální následky. Pro psy to většinou skončí špatně, protože u tomu dochází ke zranění hlavy, často k čenichu, k fraktura končetin, přední noh je to nejčastěji pažní, pažní kost a karpální klouby. U zadní končetin je to stejný kost, často je poškozeno koleno a dochází často k ruptuře achylovy šlachy. Někdy může dojít také samozřejmě k poškození páteře. The only thing I do with greyhounds is once they've been rescued and then they've been rehomed, um, the people who call me in to help rehabilitate the dog if it's been abused, if it's been malnourished, um, and to try and integrate it into a situation where it can run and be comfortable off the lead in a public place. So that's what I do. I, I don't have anything against greyhound racing. The greyhound racing that I used to go and watch when I was a kid, and a lot of the greyhound owners were great people. They loved their dogs, they looked after them, they made sure they were fit and healthy. So I don't have an issue with that. I do have an issue with what happens to them once they've been finished with. Um, and I do have an issue with the way some of them are treated. I know lots of people rehabilitate greyhounds and then don't want to let them run and don't want to let them hunt. And the thing is, it's in the dog's nature to do that. So I think if you have a greyhound and you rehabilitate it and you let it run, and they have to be muzzled obviously because they're greyhounds, but if you let it chase prey, it gets the, the instinct, which is what makes it, drives it to run so fast anyway. I think that something needs to be done certainly about the abuse but I think, I think public awareness needs to be raised and people need to be reminded that these creatures are dogs and that they're not just some sort of house pet that should live on muesli and milk, you know, they, they need to hunt, they need to chase, they need to play, as you can see. There's a lot of controversy in terms of when they're injured in the tracks and, and euthanasia of them. Um, 
but I think it's really down to the individual. It's down to the individual owner and the individual track and how they handle it. They're natural born athletes. That, that craving to run is something that you'll see whether a, a greyhound has been bred for racing or not bred for racing, whether they've ever had a race in their life or have been a pet their whole life. That need to run is something that, that they enjoy. They love, the, they love that run. They really love to hit their top speed and win. They can also obviously sustain fracturing. Um, they're running really hard, carrying quite a lot of muscle weight. Um, and that can cause stress fractures. So what they noticed is in the larger male dogs, um, because they run clockwise and they're cornering like this, that they sustain fractures to this medial, the medial aspect of their radius just here. And there's little teeny tiny stress fractures, which are incredibly difficult to notice unless you have a high contrast CT scanner. So that would usually present as just a very small lameness in their leg that can persist on for anything up to about eight weeks sometimes. And if they're not rested, it can persist on longer. A lot of the ex racers that I've worked with have, um, have really enjoyed their lives and love their new homes, love the, their retired life. You see them literally go, you know what, I've done my job, I'm never doing anything ever again. And they just go in full blown retirement mode and, um, and spend the rest of their lives lazing around on a sofa. And when that's given to them, I think that that's, that's a wonderful thing for them. The unfortunate destiny that awaits many greyhounds when their racing days are over are be killed or abandoned to the fate. These seem to be the only options. However, there are also many lucky examples. This is the case of greyhounds that are placed in kennels. I always wanted to have kennels of my own devoted entirely to retired greyhounds. And 21 years ago, I was lucky enough to be able to buy this one. Nowadays, I take them mostly from Henlow Greyhound Stadium, but from, some from other tracks as well, and some from the central RGT, especially emergency ones. They're so easy. You know, <laughs> these are the original couch potatoes. When they retire from racing, they really retire. They want to put their feet up. And at home, a couple of 20 minute walks a day, they're quite happy with that. If you want to go further, they will, they'd be delighted, but they're very, very easy going. Uh, excuse me, do you mind? <laughs> Unfortunately, because there's such a huge number of dogs, the dogs that they think might be unsuitable for homing, if no one's claimed them within seven days, they are very often put down. It's quite difficult to find homes for them because they are quite large dogs. And the problem is that people see them galloping around the track about 40 mile an hour with a muzzle on, and it gives them entirely the wrong impression of them. They also think that they've got to go hiking for miles, that they nearly need to be an athlete to have one. But it couldn't be, you know, more of a contrast. As I say, they're so easy going a lot less exercise than their average big dog and they settle down to home life well like ducks to water <laughs> they really do it's not so much the actual racing because when the dogs are racing they are pretty well looked after um, obviously if you don't look after the dog properly it's not going to race very well and most established kennels uh, come under the rules of the British Greyhound Racing Board and they are very strict. The kennels are inspected regularly and also they have regular veterinary inspections. The vets are always at the track, they check the dogs and the dogs are in good condition. Now unfortunately you do have a group of other tracks that don't come under those rules. Um, they're commonly called flapping tracks and they're just licensed by the council. And Sometimes the conditions there and the conditions the dogs are kept in are not quite up to standard. But on an average, they are well looked after. And all the tracks, the GBG tracks, have got a home finding scheme. And the ideal of the Retired Greyhound Trust is that every retired greyhound gets the chance to have a home when it retires from racing. You do get, you do get very emotional because uh, you get very close and attached to them. Um, uh, you, you're sad when they go, but you're glad that when they go home. Now and then, not very often, they do get returned. 
um, but it's very rare um, through um, where some people might not be committed enough and they, you know, think that they're ready for a dog and maybe not. So it's not really the dog's fault. Um, it's down to really the people not quite ready yet. I got to know all the greyhounds and it was a question of finding a greyhound that I felt comfortable walking, one that uh, if I took one that tugged all the time, I wouldn't be able to cope. You know, sort of that. You just feel at home with a particular kind of dog. Also, the black ones very often are the ones that don't get homed. So I decided on both occasions I'd go for a black one. And greyhounds are just beautiful animals that have been through a rough, rough time, and they deserve they deserve love, comfort, TLC, and a comfortable home. I would say they are very, very affectionate very warm, very loving, very grateful, very quiet. Most dogs you have, somebody comes to the door, they'll bark away, or if somebody comes in late, they'll bark away. Greyhounds don't. Kennels also give the option to adopt greyhounds. Many organizations in Europe encourage the adoption of greyhounds outside of the UK. This is a positive development since it would be difficult for the United Kingdom alone to save them all. One such organization is Greyhounds in Need, an association from the Czech Republic, which has helped find a new home for hundreds of greyhounds. This is Laura, a Czech who I have adopted for 6 years from the organization of the Nozi. This adoption stands in Czech for 4.500 dollars, which are the money that the train drivers will get to the Czech Republic. When we have her for a few months, uh, she was very scared. She was always shaking. She didn't like to go near any human being, uh, even sometimes when I want. But she was sometimes so scared that I uh, had to grab her uh, in my arms and uh, move her to the, to, the, to, the, to the lawn or outside because she was shaking from some unknown reason. She escaped and whenever she had any, any, uh, any chance. Uh, and she did actually twice. She escaped and we were chasing her for I think one or two days. But it got better after time, and uh, mm, right now she's uh, she like uh, human. She's not so scared. Uh, she's very uh, very cute, as, as you can see. If in some rare occasions uh, is she escapes, she usually doesn't run in like 10 kilometers away as, it, as she did in the past. But she uh, after hour and or so she comes back and she she feels here. Uh, finally, like at home. You know a greyhound up in the Midlands who, um, when he was coursing a hare, um, was so impassioned about coursing the hare that he ran straight into the blades of a combine harvester and it removed both of his back legs. So the owner, who was a very, very old school country huntsman, built uh, a, a contraption with two wheels, like a, a wooden board with two wheels, and managed to strap it onto the back of the dog and the dog still catches rabbits oh. with the wheels on. That's, yeah, that's really yeah, it's fantastic to watch. Mm -hmm. That's a great thing about them is that you know they're they're happy creatures and they just want to get on with it. And no matter what you do to them, you give them a bit of love and make sure that they're safe and comfortable, and they'll just get on with life. The future of greyhound racing remains uncertain. It seems that the biggest threat for the dogs might not be racing itself, but rather the people who keep forgetting that dogs are man's best friends. <laughs>